So what's going on everyone? So we're back for another video and this one's actually a highly requested video based on my last video. This camera here just came out. It's the Canon R5C. Well, it's been out for a few weeks, but I did a video based on the menu system on this camera. So this one's gonna be a way more in-depth guide and how you can use this camera. Basically, we're gonna go over everything. Now in today's video, we're just going over the camera setup. It actually has seven pages and I'm gonna go over line by line and explaining each and every one what they do, not just saying, oh, that's the aperture, not explaining what it does, but I'll be explaining every single thing step by step so that way you can know how to use this camera to the best of your ability that you can use this camera. Now on Canon's website, they actually give you the entire menu system on this camera so that way you can know. So if you're wanting to look at the, like, the blueprints of that and actually see for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description so that way you can check it out because that's basically where I got all my information on this camera. I just went and downloaded it and it's pages upon pages upon pages. It's so stinking long. But in this video, I'll make it really, really short for you and simplify it for you. So I've spent hours upon hours of studying the menu system in this camera. So if you could help me out and give me a like, that would be really appreciated. I put a lot of time into this video. So let's get started. Really quick, before we get started, I'm giving away a DJI Air 2S and all you have to do is like this video and comment on it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's it. So let's get started. No more nonsense. Let's go. All right, so the first thing you're greeted with is the iris mode, and that's basically your aperture, your f-stop, so your f1.2 or your f16, you know, f22, whatever. Now, you can choose manual or you can choose automatic. Automatic basically means if you go outside with your camera and you have it on automatic and you're in a very, very bright area, it's going to bump the, uh, the iris, the aperture, all the way up to about f22 to compensate for the lighting. Now, if you go into a really dark area and then it's actually gonna go all the way down to you know 1.4, whatever your lens can do, if it's 2.8 or f4, whatever the case may be. Now, iris increment basically means how many stops that you wanna do. I personally leave mine on one over three just because I want more options. So that way, let's say for an example, if you go one over three, you can choose 1.8, 3.2, 3.5, and then F4. So it basically just gives you more options. Whereas if you choose one over two, it basically will go from F2.8 to maybe F3.5 and then F4. So more options, the more better, in my opinion. Now, so the next one is fine increment, and I stay away from this one because that's getting really too detailed. Whereas I just want it to be a little bit more simplified. As you can see, you can scroll and scroll and scroll. And before you even get to f2.8, it's, it's just really fine detail and I don't like that. So I just leave mine off for that fine increment. Now zoom iris correction basically means if you have cinema lenses, it won't work for the Canon RF lenses. This isn't a cinema lens, it's an RF lens. In my opinion, these are plenty expensive enough as it is, whereas cinema lenses, you know, they can get into about 10,000, 20,000, I, I believe. I, I think they're that expensive and I'm not gonna pay that much money for those kind of lenses. So zoom iris correction basically is for cinema lenses, which I don't have. So we'll move on to the next category. So the next one is shutter mode. Now I use mine in shutter speed, not shutter angle or any of the other options because I'm most familiar with shutter speed. For an example, if you have 60 frames, then you double your frame rate and then you can choose your shutter speed for this and I don't like the other ones. So that's what basically that is. So shutter increment is the same as iris increment. So it basically gives you more options. Now I for one personally would choose one over four because it just gives me more options to choose from. Okay, so base ISO, I have mine at 400. If you were to put your base ISO on auto selection, basically what that means is if it's really bright out, it's gonna dull your ISO down or if it's really, really dark, it's gonna crank it really, really high. And I don't like my ISO high at all because it creates grainy and noise image and it looks really, really bad. It just looks amateur, so I stay away from that and I just leave mine on 400 because I mainly shoot in C-Log or C-Log 3, one of those profiles. Now ISO gain is basically you can choose ISO or gain, whichever one you're most familiar with. Most people, I would say, are more familiar with ISO then gain, I like ISO, so I choose ISO over gain. It's basically another form of something different that's the same as ISO, just something different and it's called gain. 
Now ISO mode is basically the same as base ISO and I choose mine to be on manual because I don't want it on automatic. I don't want it just doing its own thing. I want to manually control so that way I can, you know, correct my image. So moving on to ISO extended range, what that basically means is I don't, I have my camera set up where it will not go past 6400 ISO. Now you can use this one and turn that on and your ISO will go way, way high if you're in a really dark area and you don't really care what your image looks like. You just kind of want to be able to see it. You can crank that on and then turn it all the way up your ISO. I for one stay away from that because I like my image looking really good and I don't like it looking really bad. So I stay away from that and I leave that off. Okay, so there we have that word increment again and this time it's for the ISO and basically fine tuning what you want to use, whether you want to use like ISO 100 to 200 to 300 to 400. It's not that detailed, but it basically means the more stops, the better it is, more options that you have. All right, so moving on to page three, light metering. We have backlit, standard, and spotlight. So based on what you're shooting, so for an example, back here we have more like a backlit area. So if you're shooting like a head tutorial kind of like this, you might want to turn it on to focus a little bit more in the back area there. Or you might want to leave it on like what I have it on right now. I have mine on standard and I don't have it on backlit. Now the spotlight is more for, let's say you want to shoot a video and it's very, very dark and you have a light source that's in one specific area, then you would turn it on for spotlight for that because your camera will be able to pinpoint that that's where you want to go and that's where you're basically picking to choose where you want to focus. So AE shift is basically your exposure and how you want to control your exposure. Now exposure is definitely one of the most important parts about video because you want to correctly expose your image. Moving on to AE response. So basically you have three options, high, normal, or low. And whichever one you choose is going to determine on how quickly it responds. So if you have a lighting scenario like this, or if you turn that on high and you change your lighting scenario, it's going to quickly respond and just change really, really quick or low or medium, however, which one you choose. Now shockless white balance basically means how much you're going to get shocked with dramatic changes. Now I have mine off because I don't want it to be completely dramatic from one um, Kelvin temperature to another. I want it to be kind of really subtle and just kind of nice blending. So I have mine turned off. Now auto white balance response, I have mine on normal. Again, getting back to, I want it to just be kind of normal looking. I don't want it to be any dramatic changes really quickly. So see temp, temperature, increment, whether you want to choose Calvin or Murd. I choose Calvin because that's what I'm most, you know, comfortable with and I'm most used to. So I choose Calvin. Now next we have continuous AF, which is autofocus. You can choose to leave this off if you want, or you can put it on only around focus points or enabled. Now, basically your autofocus, like for example, right now, I'm tracking my face with autofocus and I have that enabled on the R5. You can go into autofocus frame and you can choose large, small. I personally, I have it for the whole area so that way I can touch the focus where I want it to be on the camera and then getting into the other settings as to why I have it set for a whole area. So AF frame position basically means selectable or center frame. So you can choose selectable on your camera. Rather, it's not gonna be continuous and constantly following where you're pointing your camera or where you're going with your camera. It's basically gonna be selectable. So if you select top left, top right, wherever, or you can choose the center frame and that's your choice for those options. So autofocus speed and autofocus response, I only have on plus one. I don't like it being too dramatic. I like it just being kind of subtle and nice, where it's basically just changing very subtle and just very gradual, not, not too dramatic. Okay, so focus mode is basically, again, with the cinema lenses. I don't have cinema lenses. I only have the, car, uh, the RF uh, lenses. I don't have cinema lenses, so we're moving on. Face detection and tracking I have on. Definitely a must for me because of everything that I do with weddings and YouTube tutorials like this. I have that on all the time because I wouldn't understand why you wouldn't want face detection on because I mean, that's basically what we shoot pretty much all the time anyway, is people. So face autofocus, I have it to face priority. I don't have it to face only because I like making the face the priority. Moving down to eye detection. Now eye detection I have on because I really think that that's a really, really good feature in these cameras. So if it's not detecting your face, it's going to detect your eye. So that way it's a little bit more fine detailed. So camera grip, zoom and camera grip, zoom speed. 
are also for cinema lenses and I don't have cinema lenses, so we're moving on. Okay, so the next thing on page six is black balance. The first thing that you see there is called black balance. And what that basically is, is your camera actually tells you that you should do this before you do anything else or whether or not you change from high frame rates. Basically, in turn, it's really good to do this every now and then just because it's what the manual says. I honestly don't know why it's good to do it, but it's what the manual says to do, so I do it. Okay, so color bars is basically one of those things that you see, kind of it reminds me of when someone's kind of playing a joke and you see the color bars up on like old classic TVs, things like that, that's what that is. And color bar types is you can choose what type of color bars you wanna choose. Moving on. All right, so these next few options, I'm not exactly sure on how to use all these things, but I have them all turned off and I find that it doesn't affect my video quality or anything, frame rates or nothing like that. And if you wanna know exactly what it is, what it is there, then like I said, in the description, you can go and check that out in the manual for yourself. Okay, so page seven is digital IS. This doesn't have in-body stabilization. Now I, for one, I don't really care about that because I use a gimbal all the time. However, if you wanna use the digital IS, if you turn it on, it does crop it in a little bit. So that's something to be aware of. And if you go down to digital IS mode, if you wanna choose standard or high, if you choose high, it's going to crop it in even more. So basically just be aware of that. And for those of you who do not know, digital IS basically means if you're watching with the camera and you want it to be really, really stable, if you turn that on, in theory, it's supposed to be really, really smooth, so it's not so shaky. But I find when you have that on, the sides and the ends end up being really warpy and, it be, and it's really, really weird, and I just stay away from that, so I have it turned off all the time. If you want a stable, just get a gimbal. Okay, so lens focal length is also for cinema lenses. You have to understand that this camera is more of a cinema camera, hence the C on there. And then the last step also more for cinema cameras, not for RF lenses like this, which in my opinion, like I said, the RF lens glass is plenty expensive enough as it is. And it's a really, really good quality. So I really don't see any need to upgrade to like $10,000, $20,000 cinema lenses. All right, so this is part one of about five or six videos that I'm gonna make just within this week. So if you're not already, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out. I'm gonna be pumping out these videos and they're all gonna be done within just one week. I wanted to make it a little bit more shorter. I don't like those long videos, like I said, about an hour, an hour and a half long. I just like simplified and right straight to the point, no nonsense. And like I said, there's about 95% of this camera that I do know and there's that 5% that I don't know. So we skipped over one or two things there that I'm a little bit unsure of. So don't forget, if I didn't explain something very, very well to you, to your understanding, you can go check out in the description where you can download the full manual to this video menu. So that way you can go over step-by-step step for yourself. Now it starts on page 185. So that way you can see exactly where I was looking for the menu system in this camera. I hope you enjoyed the today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Take care, I'll see you in the next video. Come back for part two.